Hey folks, Kevin here from the Red Caps Podcast. Wanted to do a quick video on showing you how to take a gridless image that you want to use in a VTT or just on a whiteboard type software for your players and put a grid on it, whether that be a hex grid or a square grid. So we're gonna do that in GIMP. If a GIMP is a open source photo editing tool, uh, very easy to get, very easy to use, powerful, much like Photoshop. So you would load up your image inside GIMP and you'd be presented with a screen that looks very similar to what we've got up here right now. The image I'm using is from Two Minute Tabletops. It's a Colosseum type image. And we're gonna put a grid here in the middle where the, uh, the players would actually battle things out. And so first thing we need to do is create a new layer because we're gonna put our grid on that layer. And we're just gonna go here, go new layer, accept all the defaults, no, uh, no need to change anything like that. And just make sure that's above your image. Next thing we're gonna make sure we do is make sure our background is black. Uh, so the process that we're going through here, whatever the background color is, that's the color the lines of your grid are going to be. So for our purposes, we want them to be black. Then we have to decide how much of this image we actually want a grid on. We could do this without doing any sort of a selection and we would put a, a grid across the whole image. But in the case of this one where there's clearly a circle that the player is gonna be spending most of their time in, I think I'm going to limit the grid to only be in that area. So if you can bear with me here for a second, I'm gonna kind of very jankily draw around this. It doesn't need to be super neat, as you'll see here in a minute, um, but I'm just going around and highlighting where I want the grids to kind of be. There we go. So it's not super pleasant <laughs> if, if this was going to be a, something that was drawn with. Uh, in fact, it kind of looks like a, a toddler did it, but that's, as I was saying, it doesn't take a whole lot of skill. Just draw around that circle or around the area you want. Make sure your new layer is selected and we're going to go to filters, go to distorts and mosaic. Once you do that, you'll see that it automatically fills in a little bit of a mosaic pattern on the uh, image that you're working with. And there's some options over here. So if you want to do a hexagon uh, item, you choose hexagon. If you want to use squares, use squares. The rest of the procedure is the exact same regardless of whether you're using hexagons or squares. So I'm going to do it with hexes because I think it looks nicer, but the process is exactly the same and the options that we choose will be the same as well. So you would choose whether you want hexes or squares and then tile size. This is one that you have to kind of play with to find the tile size that works for you. I'm going to go with 35 because I've kind of demoed this before and I know that 35 works for me, but play with it, find out what works for you. Tile height gives like a 3D effect to the, to the tiles. I tend to not use that, um, so I would just set that down to, to one. Um, tile neatness is super important. You gotta take that all the way to the max. Once you do that, your hexes all look like actual hexes, or in the case of squares, they look like squares. Whereas if tile neatness is down, you start getting this very, you know, it's a mosaic um, pattern. And so the closer you get to one, the closer to perfect hexes that you get. And then tile color uh, color variation, it doesn't seem to be doing much here right now, but what it generally will do is add some tinting to the, to the uh, hexes for you. So I usually leave that all the way off and don't do that. Then you press okay, and now you've got a, a hex grid over top of that part of the image. With some images, I'm using a one with a very sandy background here, so it doesn't look like it's distracting very much. But if it's a very detailed image, you may find that these hexes kind of distract or muddy up the, the picture a little bit. For that, highlight the layer that you're on and just turn down the opacity a little bit. Um, just play with it, slide it around, find out what works until the grid kind of fades to the background but is still visible. And then you can just export the image out. You go file, uh, export as, and it'll come out. Uh, if you want to get rid of all these, so you can just go control A. And this is what it would look like in the end. Uh, I think that's a pretty good battle map and it was very easy to create. So if you have an image that you want to use for a battle map and it does not have a grid on it, hopefully this helps you out and you can either make a hex grid or a square grid and go have some fun with your players. Take care, folks.